Today we'll explore the underbelly of the Colosseum, the Hippogeum, filled with corridors and cages, even elevators, to hoist up beasts and gladiators to the wooden arena floor. The experience in the Colosseum is unique in coming down to the Hippogeum, is getting us closer to the gladiators and the lions and the tigers, so that drama. And now there's a new, exciting, dynamic exhibit. You've got original pieces, you've got reconstructions, you've got virtual reality, and it's all here thanks to Hornblower Group. What an incredible initiative, and we're all gonna benefit from it. We're all gonna get closer to the lives of the gladiators. Here we see the remains of the various wall constructions used to sustain the massive wooden arena, 89 by 56 meters. But what did it originally look like? Well, we can take a look at these reconstructions that show us how the Colosseum was built. Here we can see the rows of cages underneath the wooden floors, where the trap doors were sophisticated and there were several ramps as well to hoist up props, to send up gladiators and animals at a moment's notice. Today we descend through this metal staircase. Originally there were stairs to get us down to the Hippogeum level. And the real star attraction of exploring the Hippogeum is a new exhibit which is included in your Hippogeum tour, which I highly recommend. It's an example of the many initiatives from Parco Colosseo. The focus of the exhibit is the underground passageway, the Cryptoporticus that has joined the largest of the four gladiatorial schools, the Ludus Magnus, to the Hippogeum of the Colosseum. You can see the Ludus Magnus right here, where Maximus of Gladiator was locked up. It does still exist, and is partially preserved in the shadow of the Colosseum still today. The incredible reconstruction show locates us in the real location of the Cryptoporticus, as well as shows the reconstruction of the Colosseum and the Ludus Magnus. We see a referee, and a number of gladiators walk through that very tunnel. Only partially excavated still today, you can feel the excitement and the energy in this moment as the gladiators approach the Colosseum to await their turn in the Hippogeum to fight. Now let's explore the exhibit, starting off with a number of faithful reproductions of helmets and body armor, all in this original setting in the Colosseum. This truly is a one-of-a-kind experience to learn about the lives of gladiators and their fighting techniques, all within the original location where history really happened. Now, there are many reconstructed helmets of the Mermillo with a striking high crest, a heavy helmet that was hard to see out of with this large visor. You had limited vision. It's often known as the fish, and he was paired with the Retiarius, who fought without a helmet, but with a trident and a net, who tried to capture his opponent. These are faithful reproductions on display, created by the Silvano Mattezzini collection, giving us a chance to really look and understand the construction process in this show. We get a deeper understanding of the pageantry associated with a gladiatorial garb. Here is the helmet of the Thracian, and here he is in his entire getup, leg protection, arm protection, and his distinctive helmet, often with a griffin. You also have an impressive reconstruction of the Hoplomachus, a round shield, Parma, high shin greaves, the Ocrei, and he's so often bare chested. Now let's pass over to the original pieces of the exhibit. The Thracian helmet from the Archaeological Museum of Naples comes from the gladiatorial barracks of Pompeii. We also have this one from the barracks of Pompeii. Probably it was used only for processions and pageantry and not for actual combat. It's just too decorative. Now let's take a look at some extraordinary works of art of gladiators from the northern Italian city of Aquileia. This piece is made of amber and it depicts Escutarius. This piece also of amber depicts the head of a mermillo. Now this is a bone game token of a mermillo. So there's so many ways in which gladiators figured in daily life. Here's an impressive tomb of the mermillo gladiator Quintus Socius Albus. And here's a terracotta Thracian, an action figure 
or a votive figure. It's amazing to be here in the Hippojayam to see all of this history, thanks to Homeblur and to Parco Colosseo. What a great collaboration. Here's a metal statuette of a Hoplomachus. And here's a clay figurine from Aquileia. And this clay lamp depicts a gladiator asking for mercy after he's lost his competition. We know this because his finger is raised, giving the sign of mercy or uncle. Back in Rome, we have this portion of marble seating from the Colosseum itself. And this is graffiti. At the top, we actually have a retiarius on the right sparring against a secutor. And down below, we can see a dog chasing a bunny rabbit and down below a bull. So this is the sort of thing that was created by the spectators while they were actually watching the performances in the arena in front of them. And this piece right here is from a tomb from Rome. It depicts two gladiators fighting, and so often it's the gladiators fighting in pairs. And to the right, it's the Summa Rudis, the referee. And the referee is always depicted with a stick, and he's going to use that to break up the sparring gladiators. He's going to use it to direct them to a certain area or to even pause the fighting. He's not going to use his hand. That would have been too dangerous. So after the exhibition, let's continue our walk through the Hippojayam. We're going to walk where those cages were located. We're going to see those areas where their ramps were located for their props, for the elevating of the animal cages and of the gladiators. The Hippojayam is one of the ultimate things you can do when you visit the Colosseum. It is extraordinary and it brings you right here on the level of the gladiators waiting their turn to go up the elevators, the roar of the lions, the clash of the weaponry. You experience it all right here when you walk in the remains of the Hippojayam and the portion behind me has a floor partially constructed. The new idea is to cover the entire area. We go along these elevated walkways to protect the original surfaces of the Hippojayam. And we can look around and see the various constructions of brick and stonework of the various phases of the Hippojayam used for hundreds and hundreds of years. But here we have these shafts. Each one is for an individual dumbwaiter or elevator to hoist up an animal or a gladiator. It's hard not to get lost here in the Hippojayam corridors galore, trapdoors everywhere, a lot of modifications going on. Originally, it's just constructions made of wood. It's all replaced by stone and later brick. And you have many centuries of use here. And it's just the, uh, it's the wow factor of being here, connecting you. I want to connect you to the past in something absolutely extraordinary on the occasion today of the opening of a new exhibit, which is really going to make the Hippojam come alive. But if you want to get a sense of it, you watch Gladiator. You want to get a sense of it, you come here. You want a sense of it, you're going to enjoy this new exhibit that uh, really uh, connects you to those lives of the Gladiators and the Bestiarii. I hope you've enjoyed this intimate look at the underbelly of the Colosseum. Of course, there's so much more that this incredible icon of ancient Rome has to reveal. So we will be back. We will be investigating. And I will be sharing some extraordinary experiences that you can have inside and on top of the Colosseum. I hope you join me for excavation, for exploration throughout Rome and Empire. Follow me for exciting adventures, Darius Aria takes.